while skepticism strikes us the first time we hear about it as being an absolutely crazy view, I think when we look at at least skepticism about certain things, it's not quite as bizarre or as absurd as it might seem. For example, let's consider the statement number three, it will rain on April 15th, 2175. Uh, a hundred more than 150 years from now. Now, most of us are skeptical about knowing anything about the weather 150 years from now. The idea being that even if scientists, meteorologists can predict weather over a short period of time, the next week, the next month, they just don't understand enough about of the factors of the universe to really be able to in any way predict what the weather is going to be like on April 15th in 2175. As I said, a hundred and more than 150 years from now. Now this kind of skepticism is perfectly acceptable, perfectly deemed perfectly reasonable. That is, it's not the kind of thing that anybody would expect you to know. However, by contrast, let's think about things about the future that we think people can know things about. Venus will appear in such and such a location in the sky on April 15th, 2014 a little bit over a year from now. And uh, such and such a location, uh, let's, let's assume that uh, astronomers have some way of pinpointing a position in the sky where it's going to appeal, where it's going to appear. Now, number four is something that we think, in general, that some scientists, at least some astronomers, think they can know whether that one is true or false. Similarly, uh, there will be a new moon on April 25th, 2014. That one also, we think we have a pretty good idea about how the moon works. In fact, there are lunar calendars that people use. Um, there's a uh, Jewish calendar, Hebrew calendar, there's an Islamic calendar, both are lunar calendars, and they don't have to wait to observe the moon uh, coming back into view to know what day you would be able to see the moon. And presumably they either know that, you know, number five is correct or that number five is incorrect. Now the idea with four and five, to contrast them with number three, is four and five we have some really good evidence, really good scientific knowledge. We understand how these things work. In fact, we've understood them for quite a while now, and we can predict them, but with regard to number three, the weather 150 plus years from now, we just do not understand how it will work. Now let's consider yet another proposition. Proposition 6. A meteorite will strike the Statue of Liberty tonight. Now, you know, most people realize that nobody knows whether something like 6 is true. It's just meteorites, while well, we understand a little bit about them, they're too small to really be tracked and they, we don't quite understand how the gravitational forces of planets draw them in. So just to recap, virtually everybody's a skeptic about three. Most people believe that scientists can know propositions like four or five, but I mean, one of the problems is maybe they're not true. But now, when we get to a proposition like six meteorites, and we might recall that a meteorite came into the atmosphere and burnt up not too far from uh, a city in, in Russia uh, just a, you know, a month or two ago. Nobody knows which way they're coming. In fact, there was a big issue uh, raised at a meeting of Congress about why it was that nobody knew exactly where that meteorite was going to strike. 
But nonetheless, we don't seem to know enough about the path of meteorites, unlike the movement of planets and the, uh, the Earth and the move. Hence, we can't know propositions like number six.